Hi class, it's Miss Ahrens here today. Um, we are now in chapter 6.5, which is going to be probability and Punnett squares. So we are going to talk about probability today and how to make and draw Punnett squares. We should be able to explain how geneticists use the principle of probability and describe how genetics use Punnett squares after today's lecture. So probability. Probability is the likelihood that a particular event will occur. So you, it's your odds, it's however many odds you have. How is a coin flip relevant to genetics? Okay, The way alleles segregate is completely random, just like a coin flip. So it's either going to be heads or tails, but every time you do it, it's going to be random. Punnett squares. Okay, Punnett squares are a diagram used to determine the possible result from a genetic cross. They are also used to predict and compare the genetic variations that will occur from a cross. So here's an example of a Punnett square. We're going to talk about how to fill this out later. Okay, but we have the two traits here, and they get put on top, and then we have the other trait here, and that goes here. There. We're going to talk about the types of traits that these are and that these are. And then we're going to talk about how to actually fill the Punnett square in. So homozygous. Homozygous are going to be organisms with the two identical alleles for that particular trait. Known as true breeding for a particular per trait. So it's going to either be represented by a two, like the Big T, big T, or little t, little t. Heterozygous are going to be the organisms with two different alleles for that particular trait. They are fine in hybrid for that particular trait. Big T, little t would be a heterozygous. Phenotype. A phenotype is going to be the physical characteristic that you see. Maybe it's your eye color, maybe um, your hair color, uh, black mice, white mice, black rabbits. Those are all things that you see, so that's going to be the phenotype. In Mendel's, the pea plants, the seed color and the pod color is what he was looking at. The genotype is going to be the genetic makeup it would be the alleles. So the examples of the genotype would be the big T, big T, big T, little t, and then two little t's. Those would be the genotypes. So with Punnett squares, okay, we have incomplete dominance and codominance. Incomplete dominance is when the phenotype is somewhere between the two homozygous phenotypes. Either, neither allele is completely dominant or completely recessive. Okay, that's really a lot of words. So pretty much, um, I'll give you an example here. If we have a flower and we have one red and one white and we pollinate them and then we have a pink flower. Okay, neither phenotype is completely dominant or completely showing through. So we have, you can't really tell if it's the red if that's coming through or you can't really tell it's the white. So that's what incomplete dominance is. Then we have codominance, is that's when both traits are going to be expressed. And an um, example here is if we have a black bunny and a white bunny, and they produce, and then we have spotted bunnies, you can see both the traits. So now let's go into talking about these Punnett squares. My pen here. So to start off with, we have these traits right here, and these are going to be homozygous. I'm just going to... Sorry about my writing, it's hard. Homozygous. And that's because they are the same. We have big, or little t and little t. And then we have this trait, or these alleles, and these are going to be heterozygous. So when you're completing these Punnett squares, what you're going to do is you're going to cross, okay? So you're going to have the big T to go with the little T, 
and that's going to go here. Big T, little t. And then you're going to go here. And then the next cross that you're going to make is going to be this one. So that's going to give you little t, little t, and little t, little t. So the dominant trait here is going to be the big T. So let's say if your parents, your dad here, if this is your dad's traits, both everybody in his family was kind of a mixture between being tall and short. So we have the tall trait here, which is going to be dominant, and then we have the short trait here, which is going to be the little t. On your mom's side, everybody in her family is really short. So we have little t and little t. So then the possibility for you to be tall, you have a 50% chance. Okay, so half a chance. And then for your chance to be short, you have a 50% chance as well. These each represent a quarter. So one fourth and one fourth. If you add those together, that is going to give you one half. Um, let's see, anything else I might, okay, oh, I forgot one thing too. Okay, so this would be, um, this is going to be the P generation, or the parental generation, that's how I always remembered it. This right here, what we came out with, is going to be the first generation, also known as F1. This is the first generation, so this would be you. Okay, and then say that you and your husband had two first generations combining, then we would have a whole new Punnett square, um, and you would do a double cross. So you would put your T's, it would be a huge Punnett square. Let's see if I can. And this is going to be the next one. Um, eraser. Yeah. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so then. The F2 generation would be a bigger Punnett Teacher, square. Teacher, this is turned on your TV to channel 92 for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the full news, and Maria Valdez, please come to the office. And you would have your traits just like this. And then you would have those are your traits, and then you would have your husband's traits here, and say they're the same. And then you would, to get the possibilities for your kids, you would create this Punnett square to see what would happen for the second generation. And you see how big it's getting? And you would actually just go through and do the same exact crossing that we did before. And you're going to have a chance to practice a Punnett square like this one um, in your lab. So if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will talk to you soon.